Studio One can be a bit overwhelming if you're starting out. So today I wanna share with you five things that I would do to get a better workflow in your sessions. Okay, so first things first, if you take a look at an empty session, you can see that Studio One is laid out in sections, including the main arrange area in the center, the toolbar area at the top, the transport area at the bottom, and the browser to the right, and the inspector window to the left. Now, the layout is pretty simple, but the issue is that at the default setting, Studio One gives you all of the parameters, but what happens when you don't need to see everything? What if you want a more simplified layout with fewer distractions that cater specifically to the way that you like to work? Well, friend, you can actually do that, and you want to start out by right-clicking anywhere in the top toolbar section. Once you do that, you will get this customized pop-up button, and if you click on that, you will finally get this customization pop-up window. I'm not quite sure in what update we got this feature but it is awesome because from here you can essentially drop down this menu and choose between a few presets depending on how many settings you want to see so for example right now i am in the complete preset which shows everything but i can just as easily swap over to the basic minimal or audio editing presets and notice how the settings in Studio One are all changing in real time. Now, if you want a more customized experience, then you can shuffle through the different sections that we talked about a little bit earlier, including the toolbar, inspector, transport, and browser, and then manually check off the settings and parameters that you actually want to use. This is actually what I like to do, so let me customize this for myself to give you an example. Okay, so let's start off by first going over to complete so I get everything, and let's start off from the toolbar category. Now let's see here. Uh, I like everything here except for the info view because I don't need it. I've been using Studio One for a long time. And I also don't use a lot of video. I don't compose a lot of video stuff. So I'm gonna take off the video player. Going over to the inspector window. Let me add a quick track here because a lot of times for the inspector window, you won't get the settings until you add a track. So let me do an audio track and let me also do an instrument track here. Okay, let's take a look. So as a matter of fact, all of this is fine because I use these settings at some point or another. So. I'm gonna leave all of this here. Let's go over to the transport. I don't need the cache activity. I don't need the record time. I don't use any external instruments and everything else is okay. Finally, on the browser section, I don't need the cloud shop or pool. So this is done and this is good for me. Now, the best part about this method is that after you're done creating your personal layout, like I have done here, then you can simply click on this paper icon on the top left to save this custom layout and always have it ready to go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit store and I'm gonna call it Ivan Workflow. So if I drop this menu down, we should be able to see it here for me to select at any point during my sessions. Hey, really quickly, if you're enjoying this video, could you do me a huge favor and drop a like and maybe subscribe if you haven't already? Both are free and they would really help me out. As a thank you and in return, I have linked for you my free productivity toolbar for Studio One down below in the description. This is a free macro toolbar for the arrange view that turns some of Studio One's best production functions into easy to use single click buttons. Again, the toolbar is completely free, so make sure to get it down below. I appreciate your support. Okay, now that you have a layout that you're comfortable with, the next thing that I would do is set your preferences for your time base and snap settings. If you take a look right below the toolbar, you will see the arrange views main ruler. And this ruler is important because it will not only display the way your music is counted or measured, but it will also directly affect how your audio and MIDI events behave while in the arrange view. Now to change the setting, what you wanna do is head to the time base dropdown menu located at the top here. And here you have a few options, including changing the ruler to showcase seconds, samples, frames, or what most people will probably want to set this to, bars. Unless you have specific needs, bars are probably the most useful because it's going to show musical measures, which is how we count music, and this will ultimately help you create the arrangement that you want. We're not done though, because if you notice, the bar selection also has a drop-down menu, so what is that about? Well, if you choose bars, you can also choose the note value that you want your arrange views grid to show. If you wanted, you could select a static value by choosing one of the ones available on this list. So for example, let's say that I choose one fourth, then the grid will now show quarter notes and stay this way until I change the setting again. My favorite setting here and recommendation if you're going to do bars though, is to set it to quantize. So if you drop this down, it is going to be the first option. This is super useful because now you can change the subdivision of the grid 
by selecting a new value from the quantized drop down menu. So as you can see right now, we're on 1 16th, but I could easily change this to 1 8th, 1 4th, and you can see that being reflected here in real time. What's even better is that once you map some of these values to a keyboard shortcut or a macro, you can change the value of the grid on the fly and super quickly, allowing you to get the exact arrangement that you want. Now, finally, if you still wanted to see another metric like seconds, for example, then you can still do that by clicking on this hamburger icon and clicking the ruler option. This is a secondary ruler that allows you to set a secondary metric from the ones that we discussed before. Regarding the snap feature, I always like to leave this on and you do that by clicking this button here. But if you are going to do that, then I recommend that you set your setting to snap to grid. With this will basically do is allow you to snap your events to the value that you set from the quantized drop down menu. Additionally, I also like to leave this at adaptive and what this will basically do is make it so that your events snap to the next logical subdivision based on the current grid's value and how zoomed in you are. Now, if at any point you don't want the snap feature, you can always click on the event and then press and hold the shift key to temporarily disable it and that way move your events independently of the grid. All right, moving on, the next thing that I would do is set up a secondary tool for your mouse. This is a small one, and if you've been using Studio One for a while, then chances are that you probably already know about this, but if you're just getting started or just don't know, you can drop down the menu for your mouse tool and select a secondary tool that best suits your workflow. The options here are basically the other seven tools, but what this allows you to do is have your mouse as your default and primary tool, but then switch over to your secondary tool that you choose by pressing and holding the command or control key. This feature is super convenient for fast edits, so I definitely recommend that you use it if you are not already. Personally, I choose the split tool as my secondary tool because splitting events is something that I do a lot, but I'll leave this up to you. Next up, we have another small settings change, but this time in the console. So go ahead and open up the console by clicking on the mix button on the bottom right. And then once here, head to the top left of the window and click on the wrench icon. The setting that we're looking for here is called input controls, and it is under the channel components section. Now, once we click on this, you can see that what it does is bring up a polarity switch and a gain knob to the top of each channel that you have active. The polarity control can be useful, but the most valuable part for me here is the gain control because it gives you a centralized location to manipulate the gain for your audio tracks. In Studio One, you can change the gain of audio on an event per event basis, and you do that by locating the center square of an audio event and then dragging that up or down. This is still super handy for scenarios where you want to control the gain of individual events, but in the case that you want to set the gain for an entire track, the gain knob on top of the channel is a much faster and easier approach as opposed to having to zoom in and out to find that little square icon on each event. This also saves a ton of time if your track is made up of multiple events that you want to control at once. Okay, so I have one more setting for you, and this is a relatively new one from the latest update that I find to be fantastic if you use MIDI. But before I do that, I wanted to take a quick minute and thank the sponsor for this video, DistroKid. DistroKid is a music distribution service that makes it super easy to release your music to all streaming platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, TikTok, and more. With services starting at $23 a year for unlimited uploads, it is also one of the most affordable, and the best part is that distribution is only the beginning. DistroKid also has a ton of free services on top of the distribution, like free landing pages, a playlist spotlight feature that allows you to get voted into Spotify playlists, a free music social network for connecting with other artists, a free mobile app for managing your music on the go, and much, much more. So then if you want an affordable and hassle-free way to release your music to a broader audience, then consider signing up for DistroKid by using the link down below for 7% off your first year. Okay, last but not least, I would head down to the piano roll and change the note color setting to color your notes by scale. As mentioned, this is a relatively new update that was introduced in the 6.2 update, and what it will basically do is color your notes based on any scale that you pick. So the way that it works is that you want to first select a key. So let me select E here and then select a scale. So let me do minor. After you do that, any notes that you place on the piano roll that are within the scale will be colored in blue. And if you place a note that falls outside of the scale that you chose, then it'll turn red. 
Granted, you can always just check the scale lock box, which will make sure that any notes that you program are always within the scale, but this new feature can also be handy for a ton of other scenarios. But there you have it, five settings that I would change for a better workflow. There are a ton more settings in Studio One though, so if you want a detailed overview of my settings menu for a fantastic Studio One experience, then make sure to click right over here.